There's a really good piece of feedback in here. Do you mind if I read it? Yeah, yeah go for it. Uh, Shitstein writes, <coughs> You fucking rat <coughs> nuke, sodomite, <coughs> nuke, sodomite <coughs> oh, I love like Bulbasaur, yeah. nutty god, Christian, embrace, <coughs> sodomite, extermination, 88, 88, 88, 666, slave morality, fucker, sodomite, nuke, for Christian regeneration. <coughs> God. He says, erase, uh-huh. erase war to erase war, you fucks. 1488 fucking pussy alt-right intellectual romper stomp, stomp, stomp. Nuke, nuke, nuke. I just thought I'd read that on there. I think that was probably the most insightful. I mean. <laughs> we got wow. all week. We could, just, we, yeah. could, we could just put a title on it, a couple images, and publish that, I think. <laughs> yeah. A shitstein. Shitstein. Thank you, shitstein. We, 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 we could publish that and we get 200 comments on it Probably. within like five hours. They'd be all be from Simon. <laughs> Which though. is still more than all of C4SS. Yeah. <laughs> so we should just jump right in since we've already brought up. Uh, we already brought up C4. The cent- Center for a Stateless Society at numerous times. If you have not heard, uh, libertarian fat daddy uh, Brad Spangler took to Facebook in a drunken rampage to confess to, to heroically confess to having uh, molested his daughter, you know, about seven years past the statute of limitations. Good on you, buddy. That's really good to know that. Uh, I think it was 11 and, years. And he, he has 2004. Has, well, no, I know, but I mean, that's, I believe that's seven years past the statute of limitations in that state. So, so he won't be doing any time for it. Uh, ha- if this man had any sort of means of providing for himself and his family, perhaps she would be able to sue him civilly for damages uh, up until, I believe, five years or after she turns 18. But Well, but, but, uh, but we know, according to Storm T. Agris, that because she uh, has not come <laughs> forward to condemn him, that means that she implicitly, um, morally she it. accepted it, and, oh and we have no, no place in criticizing it and this is your status Whoa. morality oh, I All know right. it's mind blowing hold on this is your status morality actually blinding you to the real enemy and the real evil here and it's it's called looking in the mirror guy okay right. that's I think actually we might a be, fallacy now I think about it hang on I think we might be up. getting ahead of ourselves I mean do people even know I don't I'm not assuming that people that listen to us even know what C4 yeah. is and Brad Spangler are C4SS is a center for a stateless society. They're a bunch of like left libertarian anarchists who propose a bunch of fucking stupid bullshit economic and social theories about free, like free market and all that yeah. shit. Free market. I tried- like they all they do is play fucking word games, but Brad Spangler is a guy who's been sort of on the first the anarcho capitalist then the left libertarian sort of scene for a while. Um, he was a co-founder of the site. He's co-founder of C4SS. He used to do, you know, he uses a sort of like a celebritarian, like an internet libertarian for a right. while, but he's also such a fucking dumpster fire that he couldn't <laughs> even keep up with that. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, I had known him on Facebook for a while. I think other people had known him, but yeah. I, I unfriended him years ago because he just disgusted me. But, uh, even, I mean, I was not, when I saw this come up, I was not surprised. Neither was I. I mean, he has, he's but, written um, numerous statuses and it seemed to have a sort of joking, not joking tone about dating teenagers and things like that. And this is a 45-year-old man or whatever he is. It's so Yeah, I, and uh, people, like, screen caps started surfacing after yeah. this whole thing. So, yeah, so he basically admitted to touching his daughter, like, who was underage at the time. I think she was... Oh, but non-forcibly. Yeah, non-forcibly. Yeah, he, he made sure to be clear. She was, she was probably, I think, six or seven, according to people. I don't want to out anything about his daughter. Yeah, I don't. Because if she, I, like, I don't know. I don't actually know what her name is. Um, I don't want to actually discuss. She was a victim of something, and there's legal and ethical reasons to not talk yeah. about it. So we're not going to. But you know, it wasn't surprising to me. I don't think it was surprising to anybody. No, I didn't know he but had think, a daughter. I was surprised and upset to learn. I didn't that know he had, he had a daughter. Until I, saw I, I was very upset either. to know that his genes were going to be passed on to another generation. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I mean, we can speculate about. It. <laughs> I mean, when you look at the guy, his face just says to you, "There." First of all, you see Kid Toucher. <laughs> <laughs> You see yeah. his face, but secondly, Actually, the first thing you oh. see is a massive growth on his nose. Yeah, <laughs> and you're like, why not you go to the dermatologist and get that fucking? Oh, cut I off? meant to grab that. I meant to <laughs> like, grab that Uncle Buck. How hard would it be? It's it's a huge. It's like a. It looks benign. It doesn't look cancerous. Just slice that motherfucker off. He probably thinks it gives him character or something. 
No, no, he probably can't afford to go get oh, that yeah, kind yeah. of medical Dude, care. Dude, that's, that's not an expensive procedure. Go to the dermatologist. He will numb it. He will take his scalpel. Dude, it's expensive when you make like eight bucks an hour in a pizzeria that's in true. Kansas City and you spend it all on weed. Yeah. I mean... Yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it's not much disposable income there, dude. No. Yeah, no, I guess yeah, this, I'm a disposable this guy, person. This guy can't even do a podcast. So, I mean... But yeah, that was, that was one of the things... I know, I we can do a podcast. Him. What the fuck? He had, been ta- <laughs> he had been raising funds and hyping up on his Facebook page page for a while that he was going to start the Brad Spangler podcast and he had been like getting sponsors and getting and I was like when we wanted to do a podcast <laughs> we just talked we these. literally started a Skype call <laughs> and started recording I just hit record okay like, guys. that was basically what it was right <laughs> I was like how good. hard is it I mean seriously yeah. My and favorite, so my favorite level of agency here is just. I well, mean, that's why talk you about agency. Something and working in a pizzeria. Well, let me get this. Oh, yeah. in. The I, best I like, thing about him is talk about agency. The reason he confessed, he lays out in his status, is that uh, his laptop he was going to use for this podcast wouldn't boot. And so he sent it off for a warranty repair to Asus or whoever, the manufacturer, and went... He sent it to Amazon, whatever. Yeah, and he's like, oh, they're going to find all my kitty porn now. I better... Oh, God. I better... And he sort of admitted that he died. I think it's really funny that the the confession in the the beginning starts off with... Oops. That there's going to be... That there's going to be... No, that there's going to be complications for the podcast. (laughs) Yeah. Like, he's like, "Uh, things aren't going to go as planned. And and we we, we were going to have this... We were going to have this... We were going to have this podcast and... And it kind of had child porn. Well, no, because, like, the whole thing started... It was like this whole paragraph about the warranty on his fucking laptop. And then it just happens to drop in that, oh, right, I'm a less than my daughter. Also, there's kitty porn on my computer, but also the warranty on my fucking laptop. Like, that, the, to me, was the most triggering thing about it was that it was, like, secondary to, like... Well, what, what's what the, was obvious what's the warranty felt... on your What's the warranty on your daughter's psychological health? Can you yeah. send her back? <laughs> The thing that's obvious to me was that he felt that he had, he had sort of painted himself into a corner. Like it wasn't it wasn't that he felt. I mean, he and then he talked about how he had been denying for the last eleven years to himself that he could have done this. He sort of was pretending, and he probably would have been perfectly willing to keep on with that pretense. But he felt like he had painted himself into a corner. Like he'd sent the laptop in that had the compromising material on it. He also. When it actually came time for him to sort of make good on any kind of obligation, any promise to other people, he couldn't do it. He couldn't follow through with shit. He couldn't follow through with the fucking goddamn thing. He couldn't even make a podcast. And so, like, he everything just became too overwhelming, and so he gave up. And it's like... He wasn't even... It wasn't... He didn't feel bad. He wasn't even sorry. It was like, oh, fuck. I fucked up. I'm going to get caught. So I'm going to just... Yeah. I'm just going to preempt it. If I preempt it, I can sort of control the narrative somehow. Definitely. So, and he definitely didn't even sounds say, like a left libertarian, for sure. He didn't even say, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to the police station. He said, I'm going to McDonald's. To wait for the officer. And I'm going to wait for a cop to come in, and then I'll turn myself into him. Yeah, like any what random a, cop. Like, just what? the next random cop that shows up. As somebody posted, as, as if phones don't exist and police aren't... Think it's not worth driving a couple blocks to get a child predator off the streets. <laughs> like, <laughs> I like, I like that that's the last pl- I think that that's the place he chose to have his last meal before being <laughs> incarcerated. <laughs> that's the worst thing. <laughs> Everything about it is like it's just like you read it and you just <laughs> it reminds it reminds me of the uh who the hell is that uh, that really like pale comedian the uh, the guy who talks about hot pockets of uh, whatever he had that bit oh, where he's yeah, like Gaffigan? <laughs> yeah gabby yeah. about being too <laughs> about you're so you're too embarrassed to be in mcdonald's what are you doing here oh i'm here to turn myself in for molesting children <laughs> 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 and you know, 